Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders, which I normally list the names of. However, due to some remarks from several people, actually, I think the list of underwater train finders is getting too long for the beginning of the video. And I think I'm going to start putting it at the end of the video like most YouTubers do. Originally, I wanted to do it at the beginning because I felt like you guys deserved, you know, front and center acknowledgement because you do support the work here. But it's getting a little unreasonable because, frankly, when I had that policy, I never thought I'd get this many. So let me know in the comments if you agree with this decision. Again, their names will be listed at the end of the video, like always. And of course, the credits will stay in the beginning. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at with it. Regardless, though, you are the reason why this content remains a theme park of novelty and fun, I guess. And today, we are going to discuss our ever-infamous recurring joke, meme, whatever on this channel, British Rail, and another odd thing that they were involved in. They built a roller coaster. Yes, really. This is the story of the ultimate... Now, to begin with, I do think we should probably point out that it is a lot less weird for a railway company, privately owned or otherwise, to be involved in a roller coaster setup than a UFO. Because most roller coasters, in their own way, are trains at their core. They run on a track, the usually unpowered cars are set up in trains, so there are certain similarities between them and regular rail trains, but there are also quite a lot of differences in terms of stresses and angles and speed and really everything, but it is not as strange as a UFO. I would go so far as to say that it's at least in the same ballpark as what British Rail generally is responsible for. Our story begins at the Lightwater Valley Family Adventure Park, which is in North Stanley, North Yorkshire, England. It was originally founded by Robert Stavely in 1969, and it's now owned and operated by the Brighton Pier Group, after being purchased by them for £5 million in 2021. Now, I've never been to this theme park myself, and I'll be honest, theme parks outside of playing Roller Coaster Tycoon are not generally my thing. It's not my speed, I just don't do the whole rides and whatnot. But I have been to some, but not Lightwater Valley, as I don't live anywhere near it. But from what I've gathered, it seems that people speak generally fondly of the park, for the most part, people that have gone have enjoyed themselves. And taking into account it's lasted over 50 years, that's a pretty good sign that it's been a successful and enjoyable experience for those that are into that kind of thing. But we want to talk about the roller coaster. The ultimate! Which is an amazing, top-notch name for a roller coaster. Gotta give them that. And when construction began on the thing in 1990, British Rail actually was not involved at that point. The original designers were Big Country Motioneering, as well as Robert Stavely himself, who really liked roller coasters and really, really wanted just a big old roller coaster for the park. And this is totally reasonable. These kind of giant rides are big draws for crowds. But problems in the development started pretty early, and it was mostly down to BCM. Allegedly, their engineers that they sent out to actually build the thing were having problems getting the metal track set up right, and progress was slow. So they were fired, and a new team was brought in from British Rail Engineering Limited. BREL is a subsidiary of British Rail that was established in 1970, and with their engineers supervising, progress soon picked up. But the overall scale of what they were trying to build here wound up causing some of the remaining contractors to go bankrupt halfway through the construction which left Stavely's team and British Rail to finish the project on their own. The British Rail engineers had some knowledge of what was required for this ride, but they weren't exactly experts. Stavely wound up getting some assistance from American and German roller coaster manufacturers to get further insight into what they would need. For example, they told him that they would need to make sure there was enough flexibility in the track to allow for expansion and contraction under fluctuating temperatures. The project went significantly over budget and was a year behind schedule. But between Staffoli and British Rail, they would actually finish the project. And when it was opened on the 17th of July, 1991, the Ultimate was the world's longest roller coaster at one and a half miles, or 2.4 kilometers. It took over five minutes to ride. The total cost was about 5.2 million pounds. 
And apparently, even when he was designing it, Stavoli had not actually meant to break this record. It was only when construction was well underway that they realized how long it was, and that when it was done, it would be the longest in the world. And it remained that way for nearly a decade until the 1st of August, the year 2000, when the Steel Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Spa Land in Japan broke the Ultimate's length record. But still, the Ultimate was an impressive beast. But it was not without flaws. True to British Rail, there had to be something that would go wrong with it, and it was discovered that some of the bogies and the wheels had cracks in them after the first season of operation. This problem was swiftly rectified, though, replacing the parts that were worn and strengthening the new ones to make sure it wouldn't happen again, or at least not as quickly. And to be honest, beyond that, the Ultimate wound up with a very good safety record. Since its debut, there have been no major incidents that caused serious bodily injury with the sole exception of a 12-year-old boy who was hurt in June of 1994. But that was due to a deer that managed to get onto the track and was hit by the coaster. The boy was taken to the hospital, and he was alright. And believe it or not, this was not be the only time that would happen. In September of 2014, another deer got on the track, though this time there were no injuries. When questioned about this issue, park officials simply pointed out that they do have a solid fence around the coaster specifically to prevent this. And overall, the Ultimate has proven to be an iconic piece of work for British engineering in general. British Rail did a good job with this one, and many people traveled to Lightwater Valley just to ride this awesome record-breaking coaster. Fun fact, it was so famous that in the classic PC game Roller Coaster Tycoon, the coaster was recreated as the storm in the Katie's Dreamland scenario. Yes, really. When I was a kid playing Roller Coaster Tycoon, I had no idea the storm was based off of an actual coaster, but yeah, it's based off of the Ultimate. Sadly, though, the future of the Ultimate is currently under question, as it was closed for the 2020 and 2021 seasons, and is not expected to operate in the 2022 season. There seems to be a few reasons for this. Part of it was the COVID-19 pandemic, which I kind of understand that. But since then, the new owners, the Brighton Pier Group, seem to be having difficulty integrating it in their new vision for Lightwater Valley. They want to make the park more geared towards very young children, under 12. And with the Ultimate, it just isn't the type of ride that would appeal to very young kids. I mean, it might appeal to them, but for safety reasons, they wouldn't be able to ride it unless they were an astonishingly tall child. Spokesmen for the company have acknowledged the iconic status of the coaster, and they definitely want to integrate it with the park. But their other issue seems to be down to safety, which is an odd thing to bring up given its safety record is pretty good, but they want to make sure it complies to modern standards before they actually put it into operation. There seems to be a lot of things going on behind the scenes with it right now, and I hope nothing happens to it because, again, it is an iconic piece of British entertainment and theme park history in general. Also, it stands as a pretty good victory for British Rail ingenuity entirely. And yeah, like I started this with, I know that trains and roller coasters have some level of similarity, but they're still kind of on opposite sides of the pitch, if you know what I mean. But they did a good job finishing it, and hopefully their issues with safety and children are rectified, and they can reopen the coaster for the 2023 season. But we'll have to see what happens in the future. And with that, a special thank you goes out to my underwater train finders, Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Frost III, Some Dude 267, Brightline Blue, Joshua Long, Ohio Trucker 1, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hoth 444, Arthur Roy, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsune 131-232, Mr. Black Rose, Tribal Typhoon, Dark Lightning 1536, and Master of None. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell. <laughs>